just a second. We might have a guest. We have Mr. Z on. John, how are you, my friend? Hey, Larry, I'm very good. Uh, tell you what, I want to come out your way come spring and climb up Lemon Mountain with you. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I drive up there, buddy. I drive up there. <laughs> That's not a problem. I noticed you made a comment about Bob Baffert, the very famous horse trainer that has had, uh, you know, American Pharaoh and uh, Justify as, uh, you know, Triple Crown winners. And he he's, was grew up in uh, Nogales, uh, um, Arizona, and he the family still has a ranch there. Z, you're not going to believe this. He has a chiropractor that works on his horses. Uh, Ernie, Ernie is one of my students. He and Lori are traders. They trade foreign exchange when they're not working on Baffert's horses. And if you ever get out here and he's around there, and he is quite a bit, uh, we'll take you down there and you get to meet him. He's a really nice guy. He's just as Un Unbelievable. A Euro trader yes. slash yeah. equine chiropractor. I've yeah. never heard of that, man. That is um, unbelievable. I got to watch him work, and it's real. You know, these are 1,200-pound animals, and what he does, he has this huge sledgehammer. It's a wooden sledgehammer, and then he has this padded, uh, this padded thing that looks like a giant weight belt, you know, that uh, you know you see some of these people wearing. And he puts the weight belt over the spine, and then they know how to tap, and they take all kinds of extra. Oh, it's like a giant hospital. Well, it is a hospital. Oh, real. Yeah, it's, oh, it's real. real. How they they uh, uh, Larry, I, uh, I'm calling in to uh, ask you if you can share just um, some words of wisdom on the copper market. <clears throat> the reason I chose this, Larry, um, I listened to you uh, speak about the euro, which is a market that has virtually gone comatose. Uh, the copper market is uh, even uh, deader than the euro. Uh, since copper made a spike low back in August, and you will recall back in July and August, the uh, the Chinese yuan currency was falling versus the dollar pretty uh, pretty decisively, and gold, silver, and copper, amongst other things, all fell hard. Uh, now, since August 16th, the copper market is just dead. There's I. Uh, Tra tried to tr well, excuse me. I've traded it maybe twice, three times, made virtually nothing. Uh, but what I'm uh, what I'm thinking, Larry, I uh, I had uh, very good profits generated specifically in 2016, coming off the low just uh, under two bucks a pound. Um, and uh, I am always uh, reminded uh, myself of any market that I look at that does go comatose, which is merely a reflection of supply and demand being in balance. And those balancing acts, they don't last forever. And so we're going to get an intermediate-term rally or decline sometime in our future, of course, not sure when, um, I frankly guess a uh, higher price, but that's just a guess. So uh, I wanted to ask, as you look at the uh, copper uh, chart going back a year or two, what do you see uh, as the next likely intermediate term move, higher or lower, please? Well, John, I have to. I posted a chart in here going back the last couple of years in uh, copper, and you notice back in August of last year we made a perfect 61% retracement at 257 a pound. We rallied 30 cents a pound up to 287. We came back in January when we were having the you know the sell-off in stocks, and uh, bada bing, bada boom, there was our low again. We went right down to 256. We rallied, uh, you know, 16 cents, and now we're backing off a little bit. We're trading at 265 this morning. I think that's a double bottom, John. I would be buying the 61% retracement here, probably around 262, and uh, it's got a real chance here. Uh, and anything below 253, you don't want to be long copper because, uh, you know, all we've had since last June was a 382 retracement. Remember, we came down from 333 down to 255, and all we were able to do was rally up 30 cents. That's a that's a 38.2% uh, retracement, and we matched that again in December. So it's in this tight trading range for a whole year. John, there's one other factor here that could be you know throwing a wrench into all of our technical thinking, and that is this trade tariff thing, because uh, you know China is a large buyer of copper, 
and they, that could be it. And, you know, I live in the Copper State here uh, in Arizona, and uh, I don't know if it has any effect or not, but that's why I'm a technician because it's over my pay grade. But that could be a factor that's in there keeping it in this trading range. Right. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, just from a fundamental perspective, um, a couple of things strike me. One, globally, uh, we John, are amidst a, uh, uh, a surge. Oops. John, hey, stay with us till the break. Could you do that, please? Will do. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with John from the Tiger Den. John, I posted the long-term chart of copper on the weekly. You can see what I was referring to. But uh, you, you want to continue on about the global situation you were talking about, please? Yeah, I, um, what's weighing on my mind, or is impacting my mind and thinking, Larry, is the build-out of electric vehicles uh, worldwide is ramping up. It has not yet reached critical mass, but when it does, uh, everybody recognizes that. And uh, whether that occurs in 2020, 2025, or sometime in between, of course, I don't know, but it's coming. And um, with and uh, copper demand uh, per vehicle on electric vehicles is very high relative to the auto fleet today. And my suspicion is that will be a demand driver uh, that, that hits and drives a uh, bull trend sometime. And these low prices that have been uh, existing now for, what, four or five years uh, are just uh, uh, so low that uh, new mine exp uh, expansion you know, around the world just isn't profitable. So reinvestment has been kind of low. So my, my thinking is um, I'm just kind of looking at uh, that uh, five or ten year chart of yours, Larry, and we had that rally from 195 up to 330. So what's that? That's a buck thirty, buck forty a pound. I'm just kind of thinking the next major move is another one, you know, dollar uh, forty rally, sometime in our future, and maybe it's right from that six one eight that you're referring to at two fifty seven. So uh, uh, I like that, uh, you know, for uh, alongside speculation here, looking uh, looking ahead this year. Well, it certainly looks like it could be, that's for sure. One other question that I wanted to uh, ask you about is, uh, what's your feeling on the gold and silver here, John? I mean, the silver is still held to 382. The gold is held to 382. Uh, if it gets strong today, we got a chance that a pretty good bottom has been formed. That's my guess. What's your feeling? Yeah, Larry, uh, I'll tell you, I've, I've posted this. You've seen the notes in the Tiger's Den. Uh, price action in Comex gold and silver. Going into options expiration on those COMEX futures uh, is has a very regular pattern of the prices not rallying. Now, February COMEX gold options expire uh, Monday, I believe it is, at 1.30 p.m. So that uh, when looking back since that peak at 1,300 on January 4th, this high-level sideways pattern without rallying to higher highs, this is following that script exactly. Now, it doesn't always happen uh, into every teacher's options expiration, but it happens many times. It's happening now. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm looking at this and saying, you know what? Uh, every dip has been met with, uh, with buying. And the sellers just uh, the sellers give up. So um, in looking at that, yeah, I uh, I like you could see a uh, a rally leg ahead. And you know if uh, if it doesn't, then you're buying in here, uh, and you take a loss. The loss is small. So that's uh, that's a good uh, that's a good recipe if you ask me. Okay, that sounds good enough. Listen, thanks for calling in, buddy. I really appreciate it. And uh, we got a new baby coming there to uh, Philadelphia. So sometime during the uh, month of May and June, I'm going to be back there changing diapers. So hopefully we'll get together. <laughs> good for you. We'll, uh, we'll definitely get together. Thanks, Larry. All right. Thanks a lot, John.